Hi everyone, how are you today? Are you excited about today's Bible story? Great! Let's read together today's title. The blood shall be a sign for you. Last week, we saw that although God had already sent nine terrible plagues on the rebellious Egyptians, Pharaoh still refused to let the Israelites go free. Finally, the time had come for one last plague, and that would deliver the most important message of God that the world would hear. Let's read today's Bible verse. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. Exodus 12:13. This tenth plague was the plague on the firstborn. God told Moses that one of his angels would go from house to house and kill every firstborn person and animal in Egypt. Raise your hand if you're the firstborn son. If you were born in Egypt, you would be the one to die. If a person was the oldest in their family, then he would die. This would be the saddest plague of all. But we can't say, it's not fair. Egyptians were sinning so much by worshiping idols, by living their own lives without God, and by confronting God through destroying God's people. Now God was bringing judgment because of sin. Whoever has sin must die. The wages of sin is death. Romans 6 23 but we are actually thankful that God wasn't going to kill everybody in Egypt the Israelites were also sinners and deserved to die for their sins they also would have suffered through this last terrible judgment if it had not been for God's grace but God remembered his promise to Abraham Isaac and Jacob I will make you into a great nation, and you will be a blessing. So to save the Israelites from the same fate, God gave them some very specific instructions. To choose a lamb without defect and kill it, and use its blood to make a mark on their doors. The perfect lambs which were chosen and killed by the Israelites died instead of their firstborn children. Then. They were to put the blood on the doorposts and over the door of the house. This blood had a very special purpose because it showed that the people inside were God's people who agreed that they were sinners and believed in the way to avoid God's judgment. They must stay inside the house on which they had placed the blood. It was just as if they were to hide behind the death and blood of the lamb which God said they must kill in place of the firstborn. God promised the Israelites that when he saw the blood on their houses, he would not allow the plague to enter and kill their firstborn. Death would pass over them. Israel had to do everything exactly as God had told Moses. God has always been the same. He will not let people save themselves in their own way. Do you remember that he refused to accept the clothing that Adam and Eve made for themselves in the Garden of Eden? God also refused the offering that Cain brought because it was not according to his instructions. God told Noah to make the ark exactly as he had instructed him. In the same way, everything had to be done by the Israelites exactly as God had instructed Moses. All of Israel believed and obeyed God. They were thankful to God for providing the way to save their firstborn sons. When the Egyptians saw what all the Israelites were doing, they said, What are you doing? That's so gross. Every firstborn son would die if there is no blood? That doesn't make sense at all. They made fun of them and did not believe it. But what about the Egyptians who did believe it and did what God told them to do? Do you think they would be saved? Yes, 
Even Egyptians who trusted in the promise and followed the direction God gave would be saved. The Lord passed through Egypt just as he said he would. This is what the Bible says about that night. At midnight, the Lord killed all the firstborn sons in the land of Egypt. The firstborn of the king who sat on the throne died. Even the firstborn of the prisoner in jail died. And all the firstborn farm animals died. The king, his officers, and all the Egyptians got up during the night. Someone had died in every house, so there was loud crying everywhere in Egypt. Exodus 12, 29, and 30. But because the Israelites had put the blood on their houses in obedience to the Lord, not one of their firstborn children or livestock died. God passed over every house where he saw the blood because somebody had already died on behalf of the people in that house. Pharaoh was supposed to have power, but he could not help with his own son. Finally, only with this last plague, the power of Pharaoh was broken. The pride of Pharaoh was broken only with the blood, not with the plagues of locusts, hail, darkness, or anything else. Now, after this final plague, in the middle of that night, Pharaoh called Moses to the palace and said, Go! Get out of here right now, or else we're all going to die! The Egyptians even begged them to leave quickly. Israel had been working for nothing for many years, so Moses passed on God's message that they should ask the Egyptians for silver and gold and clothing. Amazingly, the Egyptians gladly handed over all these things. The Egyptians gave them what they asked for, so they plundered the Egyptians. Exodus 12:36. If there is a battle, the winner takes everything from the loser. Pharaoh was defeated. Now Israel took all the wealth of Egypt. One day, slaves, and the next day, wealthy. The Israelites quickly left Egypt. Finally, they were free now. 430 years ago, when Jacob and the rest of his family had moved to Egypt, they numbered 70 people. Now, 430 years later, when Jacob's descendants left Egypt in the middle of the night with Moses, the men alone numbered over 600,000. How did this happen? Did Israel fight? Who fought for them? God! God did it all! And he said, Remember the Passover. Exodus 12, 14. Passover is one of the biggest holidays to celebrate for Israel even now. It's like Independence Day because they finally became set free on the Passover. When Jesus was in this world, he also celebrated the Passover. Do you know when Jesus died? It was on the Passover. Jesus, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. 1 Corinthians 5, 7 Like a lamb that died to shed blood for the firstborn of Israel, Jesus shed his blood on behalf of sinners. Pharaoh was finally defeated with this last plague. Satan was completely defeated when Jesus died as the Passover lamb. Satan has no power on those who believe, as Pharaoh had no power on Israel anymore. Jesus is the true Passover lamb. This is God's message to everyone in the world through the Passover. Let's pray. Dear God, we love you. Thank you for sending your son Jesus as the Passover lamb to die for us and take away our sins. When we believe in you, Satan has no power over us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'll see you guys all next time. Have a good week. Bye.